Hi guys, um, today we'll be looking at this 1973 Corvette. One year of the split chrome bumper in the back and the first year of the soft front end, meaning it has no bumper. Beautiful color, great condition car, extremely well documented, well kept. Lots of receipts for the work that has been put into it. And I'm sorry about the background noises, but she is outside in our awning. But it's, it's a trade-off. I get to walk around the car without having to zigzag around other cars. So you get a better feel for it. Not sure if the camera is capturing quite what the color looks like. Let me see here if I can get a better shot. No, that's actually worse. It's, it's such a peculiar color. It's like gold, yellow, has some green to it. Um, the, the, the name of the color was simply yellow, but it definitely, if anything, it's closer to gold. This, this actually, this is pretty much what the car looks like. A little bit brighter than what you guys are seeing right now. Um, beautiful car, as I said, extremely well documented. We'll get to that, but you know, the first thing I guess is just to look at the car. Whoopsie. Great, great condition. Interior is not brand new, but has been obviously redone at one point of its life. The seats are really nice. What you, you know, if you guys know, uh, you know, this part here, when you get on and off the car, it tends to just collapse. And this is new foams on new vinyl. Um, she has actually, right now she has the color match tops but she has the uh, one piece, let me see here if I can show it, the one piece um, see-through glass. So it's like, imagine having a pair of sunglasses for the car, meaning that from the outside it looks pretty much black, but from the inside you can see it has a cover that goes with it. And as far as options goes, this car pretty much has it all. It has air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, um, it has power windows, it has the tilt steering wheel, and as I go inside, oops, somebody really short set here, give me a second. There we go, that's better. Uh, there is a dash cover, which is not to cover any blemishes, it's just to cover the dash from, you know, the sun to avoid that it does, in fact, that it would, in fact, get any blemishes. Again, light is not ideal, unfortunately. You'll have to take my word for it, and I'm guessing you can see it very well from pictures. You know, video is a great tool, but sometimes, you know, depending on the lighting, you can only do so much. I'm gonna pan here on the instrument panel. Actually, take the price tag off. We don't want to think about the fact that this car needs to be paid for in money, right? All the gauges work, the radio works. Um, everything is very clean and functional. This car actually has the Astro ventilation. You can see the command down there, which is a set of extra fans back there that move the air behind your head. And that is A, a rare option, B, it almost never works. On this car, everything works just beautifully. Speaking of which, I have the keys in my pocket and well actually before I started I want to show you the engine bay as many times you know it's easy to just do make a car look good but what goes on under here that's a little bit harder to you know just give it a quick clean clean up and and pretend it's all in, in good shape this squinted, it's a it's a big motor and a not so big engine bay, so it's hard to really look underneath it, um, or not underneath it, but around it. There's a couple of um, let's call them go faster parts, like the MSD box. That really actually doesn't really make it go any faster; it just makes it run better, along with upgraded. I'm guessing, yeah, upgraded uh, ignition. You have the um, air conditioning pump, power steering pump, original alternator, power brake booster. Just a really clean little car. 
Peter's uh, getting disturbed by a little Chevelle. That's a good annoyance to have. Um, rims, original rally rims. It has the optional uh, luggage rack that a lot of people don't like, so they would want to remove it. I think it's kind of cool. And I mean, to a certain extent, it has a, a use too. So why not? You know, it came with the car. I would leave it. If you don't want, want it, you can always remove it and just cover the holes. Um, the original underhood installation has been obviously replaced because after all these years, this thing would have been gone. And not having any booth to show, I guess our tour around the car is pretty much done. I'm gonna just gonna close it. And I guess uh, what's left to do is start it up. And the keys are inside. Here we go. Neutral or actually park. There you go. Boom. Started like a champ. All the gauges work. Look at that oil pressure. Battery is charging. Clock is working. Fuel. Obviously, the water temperature is the only one that's not showing any sign of life right now because it's um, it's cold. It's a cold engine. Great performances from the world's most renowned opera company. That's your including the Met, speaker. Chicago Lira, I'm sorry, your Washington stereo working. National Opera. For a detailed schedule, log on. You have your power windows. One side. Side. Um, what else do we have? I can show you. Oh, you have to have fans with the. Uh, I'm guessing you might have heard that. Uh, the little click you get when the compressor kicks in. The air is definitely flowing right now. You can hear the fans, I suppose. That's the fans going off. Let me turn off the AC. A little car. Let's see. Yeah, being original, it's not it's not the loudest car out there, but she has a, you know, a decent voice. I love those tips. Back in here. I really don't like to turn it off after it's just been idling. Oops, it is. Okay, back out. Keys in my pocket. A um, couple of cool styling cues about the car are these breathers here are actually somewhat functional. I believe this was the only year. Um, most Stingrays will have the same kind of idea, but they won't be functional, meaning it will just be, you know, added for styling. Not really, not so much for, for function. And, um, you know, having walked around the car one last time, real quick, I just think that a couple of shots like this, this is just, you know, granted, these are not the most rare cars out there, but that doesn't take away the fact that they are beautiful cars with a very specific body style that, you know, is really cool. And what makes this car collectible is that it is um, the big block matching numbers engine very specific color very rare color and the car is very very well optioned and most of all it just sits beautiful such a pretty car now i'm no you know huge fan of corvettes but you know when this thing pulls up it's just such a peculiar color and and the condition of the car just really makes it stand out um part part of the reason for that is here this blue folder 
is, um, well, it has the uh, spare keys that go with the car. Those might even be, no, I don't think they were original. But either way, these receipts you see here are from the work that we put into the car. Now, if you care to, to see the whole uh, detail, I'm more than happy to send you, scan them and send them your way. Um, this is a description you see online as well. But most of all, honestly, we didn't do much to the car. She sat really, really nicely when we first got it. Um, she did come with this. This is the uh, book that tells you the whole story or most of the story of the um, car's history. So you have the original owner's manual, you have a copy of the uh, build sheet and the original build sheet right here. The way it was found in the car, this is a great tool to figure out exactly how the car sat and to verify that everything that the car has or is showing now is actually correct. And then you even have the uh, assembly manual or workshop manual, whatever you want to call it. Well, actually no, this is the assembly manual, which is basically just a list of um, exploded parts um, to be able to order the correct parts and you know kind of helps you see what's behind um, the car but most of all the most important piece of information that's in here and excuse me as I try to negotiate this thing with one hand which is not going to happen hold on um, it has very very nice set of receipts um, I'm not going to go into full detail again because it would take me forever but I'm just going to quickly go through them like this I believe actually we're looking at them upside down but let me do this instead boom here we go this thing is thick and dense with plenty plenty receipts that if we tally them all up they probably surpass the value or the cost of the car the way it sits now so that is a great great piece of uh, information to have um, that blue folder basically would go and uh, continue this maintenance history the car has this is a very important piece that makes for a good you know you can buy a car knowing that it's been taken care of uh, just by looking at it but when it comes with this kind of documentation especially the build sheet um, that is just a huge plus that a lot of collectors love that I personally think it's you know it's not a must but if the car has it it's definitely uh, you know, it, it, it helped me feel comfortable about how the car sits. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I think, and here it goes. <laughs> That's John. Um, I think that the other thing is left to do is just to look at it, man. It's, it's such a pretty car, especially the three quarters from the back. I mean, most cars, I think that's where they give their best, but this car is, you know, the lines are just those fenders in the front are just so aggressive and the Mako shark styling is is just beautiful um, long story short we can you know I can keep doing this for another 15 minutes and um, well that thing sounds good um, but long story short you know other than sending you other pictures of the things you might want to know or learn more about the car I can send you the uh, maintenance history I can send you the build sheet um, we can even do a live video it would be very similar to what we're doing right now uh, with the difference that, that you'd be on the phone with me in real time and so we can really look at the car oh one thing I forgot is to look a little as much as the camera probably won't be able to capture them a lot but a little shot of the underside of the car which is looks just as nice as the rest of it a lot of people are always concerned about cars that have at some point of their life lived in on the East Coast. And I, I can agree to some extent, but honestly, when a car is this well preserved, it doesn't really matter where it was. This obviously is living the life, the pampered life of a collector's car. So it's not seeing any of the bad weather that we do get out here. Um, I was saying, you, I can show you the car in live video. I can send you more detailed pictures. You can come see it. And lastly, we welcome uh, appraisers. If you want to send an independent appraisal, appraiser, I'm sorry, um, we're very much happy to uh, oblige. Um, what we ask though is, you know, obviously you let us know beforehand so we can have the car in a position where you can actually get to it because sometimes it might be 
while we're at it, might as well show it. it might be buried in here in one of the two uh, showrooms and then, you know, the appraiser's job gets a little bit more complicated. Other than that, guys, um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have about the car, send you more information. All you gotta do is ask. My name is Leo. You can reach me at 301-816-1000. Um, my extension is 522 and all my contacts are inside the ad uh, as well. You guys have a great day and hopefully we'll find this baby a nice home.